that are alive, you are coming with me. Hey guys, nothing important here, and today we are recording a power scale on Robocop. Now, to be clear, we are only talking about Robocop from the three main films, and that this is also taking into account that there are canonical issues with movies two and three. However, we will also be ignoring that for the sake of the power scale, as just we haven't heard anything about the new Robocop 2 sequel yet. So, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and move on to the power scale. So, first, uh, we need to establish attack potency and durability of Robocop. So, firstly, he has casual street tier and casual wall level feats. Uh, you'll normally see these feats in uh, Robocop 1 when he's performing street feats, like clotheslining people uh, through doors, where he's also like shoving his hands through wall. It's like not steel, and just pulling people through it. Uh, you can like argue that to also be wall, uh, or even high street tier. Either one, he's done that too. It's a casual feat. He's even bent metal. Uh, let's say he's bent a gun. And he has also done other stuff, uh, but that's mainly for like street tier, right? Those are all casual feats. Uh, now for wall, I've already talked about a couple of the feats, but in Robocop 2, there's a lot of these feats actually. So first, in Robocop 2, when he's going up against Kane, when he's in the armor truck, uh, he's basically, Robocop is like tanking that truck to the face. Uh, he's tanking being grinded against the wall, he's tanking being... Uh, driven through buildings, and he's all doing that casually without even a care in the world, right? Uh, also, he has fought the ED-209, uh, and he can outmuscle the ED-209. Uh, this isn't taking into account durability or anything. This is just raw AP, since his durability is relative to or above his AP. But basically, uh, he's even fought the ED-209. Uh, that, that is also a good feat you can use. Uh, specifically, attacks he took from ED-209. Another feat you can even argue for wall levels when a bunch of girders fell on top of him. Uh, whenever Clarence Boddicker and his gang was going up against Robocop for the second time. Uh, well, technically third time if we're talking about overall, but two times if we're talking about Robocop rather than Alex Murphy. But anyway, uh, this is the second time when uh, the girders fell on him, he was just fine. And the only reason why he was on the ground in the first place is because the girders falling on him was an off-guard feat. So I'd still be catted, uh, to make counted as a casual feat. <laughs> Uh, after that happened, basically, Clarence Boddicker, uh, pulled up, uh, and wanted to kill Robocop, uh, but he was combating him just fine. Uh, and even when Clarence even got hidden, he just whipped out the terminal strip shift and just stabbed him in the throat. Like, it was a shank. So, uh, he can't also argue for wall level, right? It's just fine. Another feat that I'm also willing to argue is wall level is when he took on the entire police force after the fight with the ED-209. Uh, he wasn't trying to. He wasn't even looking to fight them. Honestly, uh, so he was looking to get away from them. Uh, all their bullets, whenever they were shooting at him, were just bouncing off, bouncing off, bouncing off, and then kind of just didn't do shit. Uh, by the way, uh, like uh, later on in the movie, when the girder feat happened, uh, that actually happened after the police encounter, uh, and he's actually nerfed and everything too. So uh, you can definitely argue consistent wall level from like the police force argument. Uh, from Robocop 2, etc, etc. Uh, those you can argue is like wall level feats. But basically, uh, uh, consistent wall level and consistent street tier are fine. But they're more casual feats. Uh, now for building, or small building to building. Uh, that's the highest you're going to be able to put about. Because uh, in Robocop 2, when he's finding Robo Kane, there's actually a good two feats, three feats. Uh, basically... Uh, he was finding Robo Kane, uh, and basically, he was tanking attacks in Robo Kane. Robo Kane is actually relative to or above him in power. So, uh, Robo Kane, who even scales to him, was also, like, doling out attacks and he was just fine. Uh, that's like a side feat, though. But basically, a couple feats you can argue here. First off, uh, he fell off a 100-story building built by OCP. Specifically, he ripped off Robocane from the top of the building when they're hanging on, and then they both were falling through the ground, uh, through a couple floors, and then fell into the ground. And then after uh, Robocop got up, Robocane got up, was smashing him against the wall. That's not actually a building feat, but he's been doing that. And after that, tossed Robocop to the side. And then the other feat that happened was a gas explosion. 
basically, what happened was that this gas explosion was so strong to the point it was shaking the ground above them. Uh, it was actually shaking the entire street and that everybody on the street uh, noticed it. Uh, you could tell because the screen was shaking. Everybody was scared, right? Now, I'm fine with arguing this as, like, uh, at least small building to building. Because wall level feats aren't actually strong enough to shake streets. Building level feats are, okay? Uh, specifically, gas line explosions underground. Uh, it, was, it was even strong enough to even, like, blow off the top to the sewer. Uh, where, like, a Robocop then just climbed out willy-nilly just fine, right? Uh, again, I'd be fine as, like, arguing small building to building. But it'd also be okay to argue as just wall level as well. Specifically, a high wall level, but... Anyway, so, yeah. Uh, those are feats you can argue for Robocop. I'd put them anywhere from, like, wall to building. Small building wouldn't also be okay. It was, like, an okay mid-end. I wouldn't really have any contentions with it, but... Uh, before we move on to speed, though. Uh, there's this feat in Robocop 3, which, yes, the movie was ass. Let's face it, but... It's a thing, right? Anyway, so... Uh, in, Ro in Robocop 3, there was this outlier feat where, like, he ate a grenade to the face while he was trying to take on the rehab, or excuse me, uh, rehab division of OCP. And uh, someone might argue that to be, well, if he can't take a grenade, how is he able, able to do building level feats, right? Well, the problem is here is that his fourth protocol, never oppose a, a senior OCP officer, was in play. And he was actually off guard during during that section. Because he couldn't really aim at anyone. Specifically because they are part of OCP's rehab division. Specifically. Uh, so like he was just constantly aiming away from them. Couldn't even focus on them. And just didn't really have the durability. Uh, for like an off guard feat. Like a grenade to the chest. So. <clears throat> yeah. I, I don't want to argue that's definitely not liar. And it was only because the fourth protocol. The uh, Robocop pad or fourth prime directive. However, that was then later removed. So, like, it's no longer a weakness that you can't even argue Robocop has, thankfully. So, but anyway, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely okay with arguing uh, high wall, small building as a, mi as a mid end. Mm, building seems to be more of a higher mid end, although you could argue that as a high end. Because like one, because like the most legitimate building building feat, besides him pulling out that armor tank, was him falling off that 100 story building with the robo cane. But like that, sh and even then, right? That should even just even out, because him and robo cane were just trading blows the entire time, basically. So, but anyway, that's it for AP and durability. Durability is just relative to AP, uh, somewhat above it if we're if we're like taking that argument seriously but now there is a couple things for speed specifically so first uh the lawyer for robocop is that he was trained or not trained but he was built to have the most precise reflexes uh including to his design and this will include things such as say uh catching bullets uh keep this in mind this was done once however because it's a casual feat it should inherently be a consistent feat because that because that wasn't him with his full capabilities he caught a bullet um Right as, right as it's about to hit Lewis, uh, he wasn't even trying either when he caught it. It was just his reflexes acting up and catching the bullet. So, I'd be fine with arguing Robocop would be you ever take subsonic to supersonic and reaction speed. But his combative speeds are noticeably slower uh, to an extreme degree when compared to his uh, reaction speed. And even then, it's part of his lore that like, he has intense reactions, not intense combative speeds. So... You can actually argue subsonic to supersonic and reaction speed. Uh, I mean, you can't even argue the ED-209 rocket feat. Actually, I take that as more of a debatable argument rather than an argument you can make for a power skill. But the argument is still there, but I'm, I am i don't really trust that feat all that much. It was mainly the only feat I had at the time when I was debating Joker, but anyway. Uh, yeah, you can argue subsonic. The supersonic for reactions should be should be supersonic actually so uh that's speed out of the way now for his arsenal he has multiple things so first uh his targeting systems or his targeting adjuster allows him to like auto aim at people uh and like he can even do things like say like do calculations on the fly he can do things like say have precise aiming 
And that, and this all ties into Alex Murphy the person, because Alex Murphy the person has a human brain, and can think like a human, and can just combine his systems on top of like what makes him human. So he can utilize these as he, he can utilize this to a to an intense degree. I definitely say. Other things he has is his jetpack from RoboCop Three. RoboCop Three gave him a jetpack. This uh, and I don't know why Versus Battle Wiki said this, but. Basically, the jetpack uh, essentially was allowing him to fly around, and that and that, and that like his flight, I guess, was so intense that like uh, basically windows around the surrounding area broke. It shouldn't just be supersonic; it should be faster. But the problem is, we don't really know a concrete speed of how high or like how fast the jetpack can like tr make him travel. But it's definitely much faster compared to his reactive speeds with the jetpack. It also it, it's also it also doubles as a power station, which means he should be allowed up to twenty four hours or less to fight on the fly. Not to mention, uh, this also like helps him move around uh, and gets rid of his weakness of having slow moving speeds. So uh, his jetpack is very very broken. Uh, I'd say even be in character use because he just kept spamming the jetpack. Uh, at the end of the RoboCup 3, whenever he was started using it the first time, so I definitely say be in character. Now for his other stuff, he has his Auto 9 pistol. Uh, it's called the Auto 9 specifically because it, it can either just fire burst fire, or it fires like it's a full auto pistol. This is something he's always going to bring to the fight every time, regardless of what contention there is on all of his stuff. Uh, this isn't character for him to use. This isn't character for him to have. There's no real contentions whatsoever on the Auto 9. For the Cobra Assault Cannon, uh, I'd be okay with saying that there'd be contention on that, specifically because there was two uses of that. Uh, the first time was when he took it uh, after the Clarence Boddicker encounter, and then just two-shotted the ED-209 with it. The ED-209, by the way, is like less durable than uh, Robo Kane. And even then, against Robo Kane... Uh, who wasn't two shot? He was still pushed back by the Cobra Assault Cannon. As soon as Robocop just fired a few shots off with it, that was the first thing Robocane actually dealt with. Uh, so Cobra Assault Cannon, he will use that if need be, if like his Auto Nine doesn't work. And then, and then, and again, there probably would be contention whether or not he'll use it in a fight or if he even has it on him. I'd say he does. Robocop Three was just a unique scenario where he just didn't have access to his gear. Except for like his jetpack and a weapon arm. And speaking of his weapon arm, uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the third thing. So his weapon arm. Uh, his weapon arm allows him to essentially fire this full auto submachine gun. He could fire a flamethrower and he can argue... Actually, not argue. He can even fire smart bombs off it too. This same smart bomb actually allowed him to blow up a tank. Funny enough. While he was like in the jetpack. And he was just moving around being a total chad. So. Uh, I'd, I'd definitely be fine with saying he bring the weapon arm to the fight considering the fact that he did it uh, throughout most of the film when he was in a fight uh, when his weapon arm was on all he has to do is take off his left arm and put on the weapon arm or just leave the weapon arm on for multiple encounters at a time so uh, that is for his weapon arm now of course he does have access to his police car although that's not really combat applicable as much as as much as is just his law enforcement tool uh, another thing you definitely bring up is that he has resistances to a lot of things. Specifically, tasers, fire, uh, jackhammers do nothing against his armor. Uh, he is also immune to bullets from any type of rifle or gun in general. If we're, if we're talking about on the convenient level, like say, uh, full autos, uh, burst fires, uh, we're talking about handguns, anything you can really name, he's immune to it. Uh, bullets do not work on him. The entire police force uh, allowed him to demonstrate that being true. So bullets do not work on him. Even the ED-209, when they when it shot him the fuck up, really didn't do anything whatsoever. It just like put holes in his armor, and he just got up and just out muscled it and was just clowning around with it. So his resistances are definitely definitely very intense. So, uh, but overall though. Uh, again, he has a lot of resistances to the point that's basically oblivion. He's not exactly each go from Bleach where he has nothing, but all the resistances in the world. But he definitely has more resistances than he does win cons. 
But anyway, so uh, that is the video in, in a nutshell. So I hope you guys enjoyed the power scale. If you want me to scale more street-based characters like Robocop, please let me know and I will do it. So anyway, with that out of the way, uh, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next segment of the video, which should be the ending. So uh, ciao. Uh, hey guys, nothing important here. This is me after post editing and of course uh, post recording. So uh, I'm gonna like go ahead and add this segment onto the video. So anyway, okay. Uh, I made a new Discord server specifically. This one is definitely much better than the old one. Uh, the mods do have free reign. And uh, like everything is much better here than it was in the old server. So basically, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give a basic rundown of the new server. So. Whenever you join the server, you have the verification sections. Uh, this, these verification sections will allow me to see who comes in. Uh, and whenever you join, you won't have access to anything. This is really shown right here because admins are going to verify you and keep the motherfuckers who don't want to, who don't need to be in here out. Also, when you have access to the main channels, you're cut off from verification. For server info, here's announcements, here's the rules, of course here's mod category info. I merely made this section, I left it here, so if anyone wants to describe what their sections are, uh, as like the mods, then like, uh, they can go ahead and do that here. So, anyway, uh, for a mod section, you don't, I'm not going to show what mod section is, obviously, but here are the main channels, general, memes, art. Uh, I added art if anyone's artistic or wants to drop art and talk about it. That's cool. Game chat. Uh, I will live stream sometimes and I'm a gamer too. I literally do game shit all the time. So I even made a game chat for people who want to, you know, have someone to play games with. It, right. Content promotion. Uh, by the way, boys, Sakura is at 300 subs. That's awesome. Anyway, so uh, I'll, be, I'll be covering some of the day life stuff Sakura couldn't answer soon, but basically. Here's like the main stuff. YouTube stuff, basically. Uh, th this is for like uh, live streams, you know, because I'm in the call. Uh, specifically. Okay, this is still working. Nice. Anyway, so also, uh, I have QA if anyone wants to ask any questions, versus matches, uh, and video requests if you ever want to ask anything for videos. Obviously, QA, you ask me questions here, versus matches. You like give a match. I see what I think about it. Might do it. Might not. Who knows? Video requests. Pretty blatant what they are. Live stream VC. If there's a public VC, anyone in the server can use a live stream VC. So, uh, nerds lounge. Obviously, it's the debate section. The freezer because everybody needs to stay chill. I know I'm still the meme king. Eat my dick. Uh, basically, here's a general VC for all you nerds. If you want to talk in here without any debate. Music room, if you want to come in here and listen to some music. In New York City, if you died in your sleep. Because, you know, New York City is still pretty dangerous. But, anyway. This is a new server. I'm going to leave a link to the new server below. If you uh, guys want to join, please let me know. And, and then you'll just have access to the server. However, keep this in mind. Specifically, I even outlined this here. In the mod protocol. I'm not going to show what the mod protocol is. But basically. Uh, I give the mods free reign. If they do not want you here. Then you will not be here. Okay. Uh, if you did something. And if they don't like you. Then like. They have the choice to just not let you here. Uh, they're my mods. They have free reign. So. Do not fuck with my mods. And you'll be fine. So. Anyway. Okay. I'm going to get out of y'all's hair. Y'all probably have school in the fucking morning. Uh, after the time I record this, you know, anyway, so, uh, please join the server, and also, uh, if you're new, please hit the like bell, you know, please give me a sub, that would be awesome, or because we're gonna hit 400 soon, once that happens, I'll do something lit, anyway, so, uh, like, share, comment, subscribe, if you're new, I am nothing important here, hope y'all nerds have a wonderful night, day, whatever, and chat, I'll see you later, bye.